No, io non devo fare un, una presentazione che invece faranno quelli che mi stanno vicino. Eh, una osservazione e, e un incoraggiamento. In effetti eh, il tema dell'internazionalizzazione e dell'innovazione tecnologico-scientifica sono alla base eh, della possibilità di non perdere eh, la velocità e di essere attaccati alla locomotiva in corsa eh, sul versante dello sviluppo economico, sul piano planetario. Il focus eh, regionale ci interessa particolarmente, così come la proiezione sul versante del mercato cinese in ingresso e in uscita. Eh, in un mondo, come dire, che ha rovesciato alcuni fondamentali, basti pensare che il segretario del Partito Comunista Cinese e il maggiore sostenitore del libero mercato sul piano mondiale, mentre invece il Presidente degli Stati Uniti ne è un oppositore protezionista, dice come le cose cambiano con una velocità e che spero possano cambiare nuovamente, ma è proprio dal confronto con queste due tematiche, l'internazionalizzazione e la Cina è un po' il parametro di riferimento planetario, basti pensare appunto al discorso fatto da Xi Jinping a World Economic Forum lo scorso anno, ma anche la relazione dall'ultimo congresso del Partito Comunista. C'è un progetto di innovazione rivoluzionaria e di contesa sui segmenti tecnologicamente più avanzati attualmente detenuti in Occidente prevalentemente dagli Stati Uniti. Il tema diciamo, di, di fondo, lo sfondo su cui si confrontano le, le due grandi superpotenze di cui la Cina diventerà prevalente addirittura in una previsione decennale, poco più che decennale, nel 2030, tutti i megatrend danno la Cina non soltanto come prima potenza manifatturiera, ma anche come prima potenza economica. Fanno sì che il tema del confronto con quello che accade in Cina e come relazionarsi alle tematiche in ingresso e in uscita in Cina diventi cruciale. Quindi, quanto mai decisiva è la scelta di questo terreno e la scelta del master organizzato dall'Università di Macerata insieme a, a Venezia e, e a Napoli, eh, che intreccia le competenze, sono contento che qui ci sia una platea intrecciata, ibridata, eh, il meticciato frutta, eh, che si confronta appunto scambiandosi anche competenze e terreni di indagine. Il secondo, che stavo dicendo ci interessa particolarmente perché sul tema delle nuove competenze per affrontare il futuro c'è cioè la missione cruciale diciamo, dell'Istau e eh, su questo terreno eh, siamo stati eh, al centro di un, occasioni di riflessione che sono culminate con eh, le celebrazioni del cinquantennale e poi la pubblicazione anche di un, di un volume sulle nuove competenze per il futuro. Eh, però vedendo il materiale che avete consultato e su cui Dominique tra l'altro sta lavorando anche eh, solitariamente quindi, eh, sul tema dell'innovazione tecnologica, della ricerca scientifica, ho visto che avete preso in considerazione anche la, la, la specializzazione intelligente su cui le marche sono impegnate eh, come regione e come comunità economica, sociale, sono impegnate da tempo. Ho visto che avete preso in considerazione eh, i documenti diciamo, ufficiali eh, in cui si può notare a distanza di una decina d'anni anche quello che si è mosso positivamente. Eh. Voglio ricordare che l'ultimo bando eh, per le imprese innovative nell'area del cratere, cioè in quella più debole, quella più fragile della regione, quella colpita dal sisma due anni fa, eh, rispetto a uno stanziamento di 10 milioni, ha, avuto, eh, una, ha raccolto progetti per 170 milioni di investimenti e 50 milioni di contributo. Per dire che la Regione Marche, sul versante dell'innovazione tecnologica e della ricerca scientifica, mostra segni di reattività importanti. 
insufficienti però, purtroppo, a trainare la gran parte di un apparato produttivo a bassa intensità di capitale e di conoscenza. Questo è un po' il problema cruciale. È un problema, su eh, una lettura che ho suggerito insieme all'Ox e al programma LID, avevamo sviluppato qualche anno fa eh, qui nelle Marche, con due consulenze tecnico-scientifiche di eh, Higgins, di Circa Group, eh, un gruppo irlandese, e di Jackie Sheff, che è il direttore di un centro tecnologico e scientifico di Promotec a, a Nancy, eh, la regione della Lorena. Lo consiglio, consiglio una lettura trasversale perché, essendo uno studio non tanto vecchio ma nemmeno tanto recente, che consente di vedere quello che è successo negli ultimi anni, penso come dire, che dal lavoro che io, a cui ho dato una sbirciata a questi, queste ore possa derivare anche eh, l'individuazione di una direttrice di sviluppo che diciamo, spontaneamente si sta sviluppando e un'altra di accompagnamento delle istituzioni pubbliche nazionali, Industria 4.0 e regionali, le, le, la smart specialization eh, adottata oramai da qualche anno dalla Regione, possono dare un contributo. Quindi complimenti per il lavoro che avete fatto eh, e eh, questa esperienza diciamo, di intreccio, cioè di buon consiglio e di, di conforto anche per lo sviluppo di eh, attività future. Quindi avete fatto un buon lavoro e buone prospettive a voi. Credo iniziamo le presentazioni, però volevo cogliere l'occasione ad avvio dei lavori di ringraziare innanzitutto Diego per aver supportato i ragazzi, ma non me ne voglia Diego, vorrei fare un, veramente un ringraziamento super speciale, super, super speciale a Dominic. che ha seguito i ragazzi nella fase, diciamo, prima didattica, di formazione e poi con grandissima passione e disponibilità, come solo lei sa fare, eh, li ha accompagnati eh, alla presentazione di oggi e quindi, Dominic, veramente grazie tantissimo per tutto l'impegno e il cuore che ci stai mettendo. Ovviamente anche Diego, grazie per tutto il supporto, però, voglio dire, volevo ringraziare davanti a tutti Dominic, che è una mia dottoranda, una dottoranda che condividiamo con l'Istau, che sta facendo un lavoro veramente incredibile. Grazie. E approfitto per ringraziare anch'io Sabrina, Dominic e l'Istau in generale per aver rinnovato questa collaborazione che è stata piacevole e felice anche l'anno scorso e sono curioso adesso di vedere i vostri lavori e quindi lascio la palla a voi. <ride> So, good morning to all and welcome to this intense but surely highly interesting morning. The students from both Master will present you the findings of the research that they've been working on the last month. We will start the day with the Global Management China, which will outline what they found about the Chinese digital transformation and internationalization, approaching both a quantitative and qualitative perspective. Then, following a short break, we will see the Master in Business Strategy and International Management talk about patents as an innovation driver and outlining in a critical view what is actually the driver of innovation from a European perspective in the context of the Smart Specialization Strategy. So they really worked hard, they put into practice everything that they learned through the applied research and much more because they interpret everything through their backgrounds, their competencies, adopting highly critical approach. So I'm really proud of what will be shown today. You can be all proud of what you have achieved throughout the whole course. And now I will leave the floor directly to you. So the first group can get ready. Okay, good luck.
家好，呃，欢迎光临我们今天的报告。呃、uh, ，Good morning, everybody. Uh, today, uh, today, my team and I. Uh, first of all, my name is Salvatore Vecce. Today, my team and I, composed by Chiara Monte Giada, Gandini Esse, and Yamin Ye, we are going to give, uh, give a brief analysis of China uh, situation. Uh, modern China is really important to the global uh, economy market. In fact, it's the second uh, biggest economy in the world, and uh, from a population point of view, is the biggest uh, is the biggest country. Now, uh, the title of our analysis: China Digital Transformation and International Exposure. These two are the micro variable analyzed in our analysis. And we give uh, we gave a uh, subtitle uh, that is our open question: uh, if this modernization of China is another great leap forward that was the disastrous economy maneuver uh, adopted during Mao Zedong government. Now, starting our analysis, this is our agenda. We will start with giving a general overview of the situation in China. Then we will talk about the two micro variable analyses that were digital transformation and international exposure. Then we uh, further analyze the general situation of China, and through a criteria that will be later explained by my colleagues, we, uh, we decide to we choose three uh, provinces, the Beijing province, the Guangdong province, and the Hunan province. And at the end of the analysis, we uh, will give some conclusions. Conclusion. Uh, we can see that there was a shift from a qualitative to a quantitative analysis. First of all, this is a of course, China, you, you can see. And uh, from an administrative point of view, we have 33 uh, administrative units, 22 provinces. Uh, then there is Taiwan, that is a separate unit. Then we have five autonomous regions, four provinces with Beijing, Shanghai, Tianjin, and uh, Chongqing. Then we have two administrative, uh, two special administrative regions with Hong Kong and Macau. An important factor that we have to consider for modern China is 1978. In fact, there was the Zhongguo Geiger Kaifan, that means uh, the open reform policy, that shifts the general economic, we can even say political and social uh, situation from a central plan uh, economy to a more market-based one. This was really important because it opened China to the world and even increased the national GDP and uh, allowed China to become what is uh, nowadays. Now my colleague Jada will continue his uh, analysis, giving uh, um, an explanation of the macro variable that we analyze. Okay. Good morning, everybody. So the first variable today is digital transformation. And uh, one of the aspects uh, about the qualitative analysis is that China nowadays is a leading global investor in the latest technologies and the top three of the world for investments in key types of digital technology, such as 3D printing, drones, robotics, and artificial intelligence. So one of the most relevant aspects to talk about the new digital China is e-commerce. The e-commerce transactions from 2005 to 2016 have increased of the 39%. Then there are the mobile payments that have increased of the 43%. Then we can talk about the potential of e-commerce in high-tier cities and low-tier cities in China. High-tier cities are the most developed cities in China, and the low-tier cities are the less developed. In high-tier cities, almost 89% of the Internet users already shop online. A different situation there is in low-tier cities, where um, 160 million people haven't started yet to shop online. So what the major e-commerce platforms are trying to do is to acquire customers in these areas and to build a logistic network. Then about the new application of internet will determine by uh, 2025 uh, GDP's growth uh, up to 22%. Then the second variable is the international exposure. As we have done in the previous slide, we have selected the three key events to talk about international exposure. Firstly, there is the One Belt One 
Neighborhood Initiative announced by the Chinese government in 2013. The One Belt One Road Initiative consists in new and old projects and hard and soft infrastructures. And the aim is to connect China with other 65 countries. Then there is, we can talk about China's uh, foreign flow of students. China nowadays is a hub for international students that are attracted by China and by the scholarships provided by the Chinese government. And today there are a lot of students, foreign students, that come in China to enroll in technical courses and to attend professional degrees. On the other hand, there are a lot of Chinese students that thanks to China's economic development have the possibility to study abroad. Then the last point is the China International Import Expo that has been held for the very first time this year in Shanghai. What we can say is that it represented an opportunity to open China, the Chinese market, to other 172 countries. So to open Chinese market that is the largest economy of the world and the largest consumer and importer of the world to other countries. So then I will leave the floor to my colleague Yamin. Hi, everyone. Now we decided to study some uh, quantitative data. <laughs> From the six variables that we studied, uh, shown in the previous slides, uh, we decided to do a composite indicator analysis. And in the graph, as you can see, we discovered the five very outstanding provinces, Guangdong, Jiangsu, Shanghai, Zhejiang, and Guangdong. This uh, five provinces are all placed in the southeast, uh, um, southeast area of China. This is widely known as the most, uh, uh, the wealthiest and richest part of China. And this uh, party distribution is uh, confirmed as well from the next analysis that we conduct, the class analysis. We clusterize all the variables for each, uh, um, all the variables for the old provinces, and we discovered three main clusters. The first one, the, from the um, right, from that side, we have the first uh, cluster that is composed by almost all the provinces uh, of uh, the previous analysis, so the, uh, the southeast, uh, the richest one. The second cluster is Guangdong, that is the only one, it's a particular um, province of China because of its background of open market, um, we can say. The third cluster is the biggest one, it's composed by all the inland province of China. And we decided then to study, um, to deepen our study, study one province for each cluster, so Beijing, Guangdong, and Hunan. I give you some brief information from, of these uh, provinces. Beijing is the, pro, uh, is the capital of China and uh, it's considered an in innovative center. In fact, one third of the high-tech company, high companies of China are in Beijing. And it attracts every year a lot of foreigners and tourists, uh, also thanks to their um, uh, initiatives, like the Summer Olympic Games of 2008. Guangdong, as I said before, is a particular province of China. In fact, they, they hope they became uh, the next China Silicon Valley. In fact, uh, recently they plan to, uh, they plan to create uh, an economic belt from Guangzhou and Shenzhen to de develop this uh, high-tech um, high um, uh, field. And uh, nowadays, Guangdong produce 30% of China export and one third of world production of shoes, textiles, and toys. Hunan, the last of our provinces, is we can say the most traditional um, province that we studied. It's the hometown of Mao Zedong, and in fact, it's due to this reason, uh, it, it took a long time to modernize and kick up, keep keep up with the um, latest uh, reforms. But in the last decade, they, they, 
developed very much. In fact, uh, they, uh, they had in the first decade of the 21st uh, century a uh, GDP of over 10% every year due to its geographical junction of the Belt and Road Initiative. Now I, my colleague Esther will give you some other information in detail of these provinces. Good morning, everyone. After having introduced these provinces, now we are going to analyze them <laughs> from a quantitative point of view. Uh, now we are going to analyze the first variable that is digital transformation. As we can see from the graphs on the right, the variables are the number of graduates in an institution and the expenditure for research and development. Uh, for both graphs, um, Guangdong is the province which has the best development. Guangdong is the province in, in grey, but also the other provinces uh, had a growing pattern. Uh, the only exception is, rep is represented by the number of patent issues. In fact, uh, from uh, 2011 until 2015 is Hunan, the province which uh, has a growth um, and then had a sudden fall uh, that is contrasted by an, a rapid decrease, increase of uh, Guangdong province. Analyzing the second variable that uh, is uh, international exposure, we can see almost the same pattern. In fact, for foreign funded enterprises and for total export, is Guangdong the leading province? And the gap between the other provinces is quite wide, but overall is registered a constant uh, increase. Um, once again, Hunan make an exception for importation. In fact, uh, until 2015, it registered uh, growth. Then um, it experienced a sudden fall that is contrasted by a um, rapid increase of Guangdong importation. In conclusion, we can see that during the last decade, China has done a lot of reforms in order to enhance uh, digital transformation and to strengthen its international exposure. However, we suggest you to take this result with caution due to few data available. Um, Thank you to its initiatives, such as uh, Belt and Road Initiative and the uh, International Import Expo of Shanghai of this year. China is constantly stepping, pe uh, putting step forward. An uh, interesting question could be uh, ask ourselves if China will be able to keep on this path. Thank you for your attention. Do you have any question that you would like to ask in case, or I don't know. L later you can ask if you have uh, any question. So, good morning everyone, my name is Davide and today I'm very glad to introduce you the first project uh, work uh, by, uh, made by Sorrentino Group, a promising uh, project group composed by my beautiful co-workers, Miss Tortoni Federica, Miss Paricelli Sabrina and obviously me. The scope of our analysis is to uh, comprehend and to understand Chinese digital transformation and uh, international exposure, highlighting the uh, government's uh, initiatives and strategies approved during the last five-year plans. Such uh, types of initiatives, for example, are Digital China, that, uh, is, uh, that aims to improve digitalization of uh, uh, enterprises and uh, industry uh, through the use of uh, e-commerce and uh, mobile payments. Uh, uh, the, strategy of, the strategy of Made in China 2025 that aims to uh, improve the, um, uh, the manufacturing sector innovation and uh, use of uh, high-tech uh, initiatives. The Go West uh, initiative instead uh, aims to, um, uh, aims to um, improve the cooperation and uh, the progress 
of uh, internal areas and borders regions. Instead, finally, the Belt and Road Initiative that aims to um, uh, that aims to improve the internationalization of Chinese society. <clears throat> Main points of our analysis uh, are based uh, uh, among uh, an analytical process, so a general overview of China's situation and uh, the major correlation uh, between uh, uh, our uh, analyzed variables. We also take uh, in consideration the focus on uh, three uh, very different regions, Guangdong, Tibet, and Qinghai. And finally, we uh, concluded with uh, future scenarios and uh, the actual situation of China. <coughs> Our analytical process um, will comprise uh, uh, 31 provinces uh, uh, studied from uh, 20 uh, uh, 2011 to 2016. As innovation indicators, we uh, focused on uh, expenditure over, on research and development, uh, the number of authorized patents on force, and uh, uh, foreign elements uh, in, uh, and uh, as for elements indicators, we uh, took in consideration the foreign founded enterprises, the total of import and export from 2011 to 2016. So, let's start with the, the good of our project and I will introduce you, Ms. Sortoni Federica, that will guide us in a, a general overview and correlation of our variables. Thank you. So, thank you, Davide, and good morning to everyone. Uh, as my colleague said, I'm uh, going to explain to you our analysis. And we started from the um, analysis of the innovation macro factor. And we took under examination two variables, that of expenditure on R&D and that of patents authorized in force. Because we thought that they are the example of China's willing of innovation. Uh, so, um, as we can see in the first graph, the uh, general situation from 2011 to 2016 as regards the uh, expenditure on R&D is uh, as a positive trend uh, for each province. And uh, this is the sign that China is uh, investing a lot on innovation. But if we focus on the 2016, the three main provinces uh, which um, spent the most on research and development are Guangdong, Jiangsu, and Shandong. As regards the uh, um, variable of patents authorized in force, the situation is the same. In fact, the three uh, main provinces are again Guangdong, Jiangsu, and Shandong. But what's uh, relevant for, from the variation um, is Zhejiang's um, growth of uh, patents. In fact, uh, from 2011 to 2016, it, uh, it increased of uh, 38,000. Um, analyzing the foreign element, uh, we took uh, under examination three um, variables that are uh, the foreign founded enterprises, the total of imports, and the total of exports. Here you can see uh, the um, um, analysis of uh, foreign founded enterprises um, in China of, in 2016. And again, uh, we can, if we look at the graph, uh, we can see that the first three um, provinces uh, with the highest number of um, in, uh, foreign firms in, its, in their territories are Guangdong, Shanghai, and Jiangsu. Here uh, in this slide is shown the, situa the situation of import and exports in China. So uh, if you look at the first two graphs, you can see that there is a general positive um, trend on import and export. Uh, with uh, some peaks, for example, in uh, uh, the graph of uh, imports uh, for Beijing and Shanghai, which increased um, a lot. 
Uh, if we focus on 2016, uh, we can see that Guangdong is again the first province for uh, the total of import and the total of export, while uh, Jiangsu and Shanghai um, uh, are also the first three um, main provinces for import, and Jiangsu and Zhejiang uh, for export. After making this general analysis of the situation in China, we um, made a correlation between uh, of, of all um, the variables of each macro factor, and uh, the results showed us that uh, relevant is the relationship between patents and the foreign-founded enterprises. In fact, uh, the, as we can see um, in the graph on the right, uh, um, the, um, China um, uh, uh, saw a, gr a great um, increase of the number of, pa of patents, but we um, can say that this finding has some limitations. In fact, we found out that uh, patents in China can be divided into utility model and design patents, which appears to be of lower quality and invention patents, which are the real innovative ones, but uh, cover just 19% uh, uh, of the total. And um, here, uh, the um, foreign element uh, um, uh, is really uh, relevant because of this 19%, uh, we found out that the 98% uh, of these innovative patents are filed by uh, foreign firms. Most of them are uh, American, Korean, German, and Japanese. So uh, that's why these two variables are really linked. After that, the other result is the relationship between expenditure on R&D and exports. In fact, um, uh, this, uh, this is the proof that um, uh, China, th that China shifted uh, from um, the world's factory to um, a new condition. In fact, if you look at the um, China stop export uh, ranking of, of 2017, we can see that, uh, um, that in first places there are electrical machinery and equipment and machinery including computers, while uh, clothing and toys, which were the leading products of the previous era of China's uh, transformation economy uh, covers together just the 6% of the total. So to sum up, we can say that China's willing of innovation is perfectly clear from our analysis, but what's also perceivable is the contribution of um, the foreign element. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, here we start with the um, uh, analysis of the provinces. Uh, so in order to better understand the characteristics of Chinese provinces, we made this cluster analysis, uh, and we have three groups. Uh, we see that in the first cluster, there are the coastal uh, and the southern areas, uh, including the biggest cities. Uh, in uh, cluster two, uh, we see that there are the um, less developed regions, um, uh, such as the uh, central and the western areas, uh, including the five autonomous regions, and in the last group there is only um, Qinghai province. So we selected um, a province for each cluster, uh, Guangdong in cluster one, uh, Tibet in cluster two, and obviously in Qinghai. Uh, so the first is Guangdong, and um, so Guangdong was uh, one of the first uh, um, provinces in China to develop uh, thanks to the um, Deng Xiaoping's open door policy um, launched already 40 years ago. And uh, we selected this province because uh, it always placed first in our rankings uh, regarding uh, both innovation and the foreign element. And uh, in fact, uh, we saw that in 2016, um, Guangdong accounted for the 10% of the Chinese total GDP also accounted for the 28% of the uh, total Chinese export value and uh, for the 10% of the retail sales value of consumer goods in all China. Uh, so Guangdong can, be, can uh, really be referred to as uh, the China's leading province. Uh, in fact, uh, its contribution to 
um, the total uh, development of China is really impressive. Uh, the second region is uh, Tibet, uh, which is a minority autonomous region, and um, we uh, selected it because it's, um, uh, Tibet is included in Go West initiative, and uh, we saw also the, uh, this initiative's success. Um, this policy began in 2000 and uh, is uh, improving um, the economic development of central and western areas. And in fact, we saw that uh, uh, Tibet in the last years uh, developed uh, a lot. In fact, um, uh, we saw that there is, there is an increase uh, on expenditure on R&D, number of R&D projects, uh, and number of new products. Um, Tibet's exports are also um, increasing a lot, and due to Tibet's uh, geographical position, um, uh, most of them are border trade. And uh, at least we see Qinghai province, which is also strictly related to Tibet. And uh, so we wanted to find out um, a reason for that um, uh, atypical cluster, so, so for that position of Qinghai. And uh, we saw that regarding uh, innovation and regarding import, export, uh, and uh, foreign funded enterprises, uh, Qinghai shared uh, the typical characteristics uh, of uh, the less developed regions. And, uh, but there was a different um, uh, variable, which was FDI. In fact, uh, in 2015, Qinghai um, um, placed first in the rankings of FDI in all uh, in China, uh, overriding also flourishing provinces such as uh, Guangdong. And uh, we all, uh, also discovered that most of these FDI uh, was, were um, Hong Kong. So, and um, so Qinghai is also relevant because it's included in a Go West strategy and in Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, in fact, we see also that in the last years there is also the improvement of the Qinghai Tibet uh, Railway. Uh, so, <coughs> so, to conclude our project, uh, we can say that uh, China has the firm uh, intention to minimize the gap between rural and uh, urban are areas using uh, um, the Go West initiative, and uh, uh, it uh, will uh, go on with uh, the development of uh, scientific and uh, technological competence, but uh, um, uh, strictly cooperating with the foreign uh, countries. Uh, in the future, we can say that uh, China will uh, go on with uh, mergers and uh, acquisition of uh, foreign enterprises, uh, will improve the international cooperation to uh, resolve the lack of scientific skills in some sectors, and uh, it uh, will improve also the formation for future Chinese engineers and scientists. Women, uh, thank you. If uh, there are some questions in English, not in Chinese, please. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Giulio Casagrande, and I did this project work with my colleagues, Arceda Bersani and Francesca Danna. And now uh, we will introduce you to some concepts 
about digitization, internationalization, what they are and how they are applied in China. Um, in what we call the, Chinese, the China's moderniz modernization era, because it's a process that has already begun time ago and is still continuing. So, first, a look into our topics. There will be, our discussion will be divided into four major points. Uh, the first is going to be an introduction about our project work and as we design this project work and the methodology that we use to um, find our data. The second point would be uh, an introduction about digitalization and internationalization concept and how they are applied in China, what China needs to uh, digitalize and to be more open. Then we will focus uh, on the three provinces that we choose uh, according to our data analysis and we will provide you uh, motivation on this choice and a deep look into China. And then we will give you some results and remarks and some point of view to some point of reflection. So first of all, a brief introduction on how we uh, choose our data. Um, so for digitization, we decided to choose four data that are the expenditure of R&D, number of R&D projects, number of higher institutes, and new products. So after uh, the data we were given, uh, we did a, relation, a correlation between these data, and we chose the data that we thought were most significant. We are not going to uh, focus on these data in particular, but they are um, really important to the, uh, the choice of our provinces and the analysis of the clusters and the ranking. So for internationalization, we choose these other three uh, data that are foreign funding enterprises, the number of imports, and the number of exports. So now a brief introduction about digitalization. Uh, the concept of digitalization is as simple as that, is to digitalize uh, physical uh, transactions. So digitalization can be, can operate mostly in two different uh, areas. One is the society, so uh, daily life, as well as inside the industrial uh, activities. For the, for the digital effect in the daily life in China, the digitalization is pretty strong. Uh, China, as you can see for, from the bar graph, uh, China, uh, in less than a decade, increased a lot the number of, of the um, um, internet users. Now China has more than 800 million internet users, and it's the highest in the world. And this is also related to a really huge e-commerce uh, platform that is really, really important, as our colleagues showed before. But digitalization is not only inside society, it's also inside the productivity and industrial sector. Uh, because China, even if it's really, really advanced inside the, um, society, inside the daily life concept of digitalization, still lack in the industrial uh, side uh, respect to other countries like America and Japan. China needs to improve its uh, digital uh, industrialization to um, increase the productivity of industries. And as we can see, the three logos that are the most significant um, concept of digitalization, there is the ICT, the, Internet, uh, the Information Communication Technology, the IoT, uh, Internet of Things, and the Cloud Sharing Services. These are the three most important services that will provide China to, that will allow China to uh, increase the industrial productivity. So the digitalization, as we saw, has an impact on the national field, so inside the society and the daily life, as well as the international uh, field, because China cannot do this work alone. She needs to innovate, and she need, uh, she, and China needs the help from other countries. So it's a really important uh, key factor also for internationalization, not only for digitalization. 
The last graph that I will show you is the, the one is in the upper left. Uh, even if China is not that advanced inside the industries, digitalization, China is the first, uh, is the major ex exporter country of ICT goods in the world. It has more than the 30% of total uh, uh, ICT goods exports around the world, uh, as well as in, inside production uh, chain. China produces inside the total of its uh, good production, more than 26% of these goods are ICT goods. So as, we said, as I said, digitalization is not important just for China, it's important also for international point of view because it relates on cooperation with other uh, countries. Now we will have a look on internationalization. I will leave the floor to my colleague, uh, Francesca. Good morning, everybody. Uh, now uh, we talk about uh, internationalization. Uh, first of all, we want to mention the Cultural Revolution because in this period that started in 1966, uh, China um, uh, is sealed from outside world. Only uh, after the end of the uh, uh, Cultural Revolution, with the Deng Xiaoping opening the door reform in 1978, uh, China opened to the outside world. And Deng Xiaoping first uh, planned to create uh, the special economic zones uh, that are an area where uh, uh, it was experimented the uh, uh, ca a capitalist economy. Uh, Deng Xiaoping uh, uh, rise in this uh, period a motto, uh, getting rich is uh, glorious. And uh, with this motto, they were changing in uh, cultural uh, uh, society and international. For cultural, uh, in China emerged a new ca social class that was the class of entrepreneur. And uh, with the, uh, for an international aspect, uh, China became uh, op more open to, uh, uh, the, uh, for the trading uh, with the outside world. And uh, uh, for the first phase uh, of the uh, rising of the economy of China, uh, they were really important, uh, the foreign direct investments that are the investments from, uh, uh, that come from outside into China and help China in rising uh, its economy. Uh, it also uh, become important, uh, especially in uh, uh, nowadays, the outward foreign direct investment, that are the investments that uh, uh, began from China and uh, uh, go uh, for going abroad. We uh, can talk uh, about uh, digitalization, internationalization separately. So we found uh, uh, some project uh, uh, that got these two concepts. And uh, 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 according to us, there are the Made in China 2025 project uh, that focus on productivity innovation and uh, on uh, the shifting from quantity to quality. With the, uh, that project, China wants to be the leader in uh, 10 key factors by uh, 10 key sectors by 2049. Uh, f uh, the first uh, the two of the two of these uh, sectors are robotic and uh, renewable energy. And uh, another uh, important project uh, is uh, the Better Road Initiative that is a, a political project that wants to facilitate the cooperation among uh, countries uh, in China and this facilitation uh, can uh, take place uh, creating uh, uh, infrastructure projects. And uh, uh, to doing this, is important the outward foreign direct investment. And we see in uh, this uh, graph how in last years the outward foreign direct investment are uh, increased. And uh, in the same way how uh, the ra global ranking of China increased uh, too. Now I will 
go deep in China, talking about the provinces with my colleagues. Okay. Thank you, Francesca and Giulio, and good morning, everyone. Uh, so, after macroanalysis, we decided to go deep inside Chinese situation and to focus on three provinces. The three provinces we decided to focus on are Guangdong, Chongqing, and Xinjiang. Uh, they're very different from one another, not only in terms of setting, as Guangdong is set in the southern part in the coastal area, Chongqing in the center, and Xinjiang in the northern part, in the border. But also for their historical background, uh, that had a huge impact in the, in the diverse evolution. But our choice was also based on the GDP and on the cluster analysis we made that uh, did nothing more than underline the differences that we already knew. So, starting from Guangdong, uh, Guangdong is representative of the most developed provinces of China and um, and was one of the first provinces where special economic zones were created. This factor, plus the fact of a huge concentration of manufacturing industries, uh, made it gain the epithet of the word factory. Moreover, Guangdong is considered the leader in the industrial sector, in the economic one, and in scientific achievements. But what caught our attention the most in this analysis was the huge gap between imports and exports, spe uh, spe specifically in 2014. This significant increase of the imports was due to the adoption of uh, new political strategies by Deng Xiaoping in 2014. Uh, then, shifting to Chongqing, Chongqing is set in the center and is one of the developing provinces. And the attempt of the government to develop this area was seen not only in the position of Chongqing as a, a turn, uh, as a turning point of the new Silk Road aimed at creating a connection between China and the international markets by land, but also by the creation of new special economic zones here as well, and the adoption of the Go West policies of the GoWest policy aimed at uh, lessening the differences between the most developed coastal areas and the less developed central ones. Uh, in this case, what caught our attention was the huge and amazing increase of this expenditure on R&D in only six years that is, as you can see, 152%. Isn't it impressive? No. Yeah, you look impressed. Thank you. Um, then, last but not least, Xinjiang. Xinjiang province is very, very particular, uh, especially for its internal situation. It's an autonomous region in the border of China, characterized by the presence of uh, ethnic diverse groups and of terrorist groups. And despite this situation, the government is still trying to improve this area as well, uh, relying on tradition, relying on cultural initiatives, and on, edu and on education. In fact, as we can see, though the numbers, the results are not as high as the ones in the other provinces, they're still positive. Uh, in fact, the number of higher institutes are increasing and trying to welcome foreign students from abroad. So that was the situation of the Chinese provinces we chose. And now to sum up and to briefly mention the future perspectives of, of China, we can say that China is currently shifting from a high-speed growth to a high-quality growth, relying on Chinese investments abroad, on income foreign investments, on a major control of economic operations, both on a large scale and on specific regions. And then all that we said by now is actually connected to the guiding principle of socialist market economy introduced by Deng Xiaoping, yeah, Deng Xiaoping, sorry, uh, at the end of the 70s, um, trying to rely on a market economy with socialist characteristics. So that's it. Thank you for your attention and Merry Christmas. <laughs> okay.
fare Microphone, love and hate. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm with Soy Data Group. Uh, ladies first, Julia Giustozzi, uh, Beatrice Jimenez, and I'm Michele Salvemini. Isn't it too loud? It's fine? Okay. Um, as mentioned by previous groups, we were asked to work with two macro variables um, internationalization and digitalization in a specific country, China. And of course, we had to consider its many provinces. Now, this is a simple outline of what we did, starting from the mm, first days to the end. We firstly focused on the two macro variables, internationalization and digitalization, to see whether they were correlated and how. Then we moved to the data set. Uh, we worked with uh, the data that we were also able to find online uh, through the National Bureau uh, data, uh, Database. And we tried to create a general picture of what China uh, what, what's, been, what's been going on in China for the last years, uh, specifically from 2011 to 2016. And then, through the use of the data set, we tried to create uh, several lists from which we selected a few provinces. Some, some we thought could be interesting to analyze. Uh, not all the same. We have three relatively two relatively similar provinces and a third one, which you now you know of because the previous member, uh, Sabrina, told us about. And then we're going to try to draw some conclusions about what is probably going to happen in the next years in China and what was um, the uh, general findings of this research. But let's just move to uh, the forces for good, the way I like to call them. Internationalization and digitalization. Now, as uh, uh, the President of Istanbul mentioned before, last year at Davos, uh, World Economic Forum, Xi Jinping said we should develop a uh, dynamic innovation-driven growth model. Now, this is very important uh, mention because he's not only talking about the world, he's specifically talking about what China means, uh, uh, is planning to do uh, within the next 10, 20, even 50 years. And innovation, when he's talking about innovation, he's talking about innovation from all fronts, which means, yes, there will be importing technologies, know-hows, um, intellectual properties to develop Thanks to, I mean, from, with the help from uh, outsiders, but also, well, preferably, uh, from the inside. So that's why research and de development from the inside is very important. And we will see later on some differences between the import and export data that we uh, were handed. Now, when talking about innovation, internalization is also very important. Why is that? Well, several researchers from Europe, not only from Europe, have noticed how these two elements are strictly correlated. They analyzed uh, small and medium enterprises, and sometimes countries work like enterprises. So they noticed how activities, uh, enterprises that were related, that were engaging in international activities and innovation at the same time, they were more strong and more competitive on the global market. And of course, all these leads to a general economic prosperity in the case of enterprises and also in the case of China. Uh, general situation. Now we're going to now move to the data that we love so much, and to do that we're going to uh, leave the floor to um, uh, Beatrice Jimenez. So, good morning everybody. Uh, I am going to talk about the data analysis we made uh, through our uh, research. Um, we started from um, correlation metrics using all the variables given. Um, in here you can see the list of the variables we considered for the correlation metrics. The correlation metrics um, helped us to understand which variables were more related to each other. The three, the three macro vari variables were innovation, uh, foreign elements and education. After the correlation metrics, we created two composite indicators to understand more deeply the digitalization and the internationalization of China. 
Um, okay, so uh, the first composite indicator uh, was made of uh, innovation and education. We used also education because in the correlation matrix uh, these two variables were uh, strongly related. So as you can see from the graph, um, digitalization in China is cost constantly increasing and uh, this is mostly due to the patents that for example in 2016 are 42.8 percent of all patent applications in the world. Then after digitalization we uh, analyzed the internationalization. Internationalization that um, considered foreign funded enterprises, exports and imports. Um, after an initial increasing trend China registered a decreasing trend from 2014 till 2016. Uh, this is uh, mostly due to exports and imports. Imports decrease of 14% while exports of 10%. Uh, probably this is due to economic slowdown, falling uh, commodity prices and currency devaluation. After the general overview and analysis of China, uh, we made a more specific analysis of three provinces of China. Um, the selection of these uh, three provinces, Zhejiang, Jiangsu, and Qinghai, uh, was made using um, the same composite indicators we, um, we used for China. And uh, through this composite indicator, we created a list. Uh, we selected two provinces from the top ten uh, positions of this list and one of the, uh, from the lowest positions of this list. Uh, I am going to talk now about Zhejiang. Zhejiang is a Chinese province located on China's east coast and it boasts one of the top five busiest ports in the world. Uh, about data, uh, uh, we analyzed innovation and foreign element uh, uh, in order to compare Zhejiang with China. And we saw that uh, Zhejiang has a very similar trend compared to China. Uh, for example, patents in 2016 uh, increased of 36,000 from 2015 while exports in 2016, uh, like China, um, decrease of, uh, in this case, 3%. Okay, now uh, we are going to, wa uh, to watch um, the future of this province. Um, this province is part of the Yangtze River Delta area, uh, together with Shanghai, um, Anhui, and Jiangsu. Um, this area was uh, considered uh, from the um, China State Council. China State Council in 2010 uh, said that uh, um, it wanted to, to make um, of this area uh, a world class city cluster by 2030. Now we are going to talk about the second province with Julia. Thank you. Hello everybody, <coughs> so now I'm going to introduce the Jiangsu province. So as Beatrice mentioned before, we took into account uh, a data set with uh, indicators taken from annual national reports and uh, through a correlation matrix we found out there is a strong correlation between uh, imports, patents imports uh, and foreign funded enterprises. So we created uh, a graph with a trend and as you can see there has been uh, a significant increase in all these three variables uh, between 2015 and 16. So at this point we ask ourselves why there has been this change in the trend and we have done so a qualitative analysis and in uh, Kunshang in 2015 there has been the China Import Expo that may have had an impact on this variation of the trend because it was um, created to promote uh, the imports of foreign products in China. Another significant uh, information is that 
Jiangsu has several R&D cooperation with uh, 70 countries and regions. The, most, the major partners are Israel, Finland, UK, Czech Republic, Ontario, Canada, and Victoria of Australia. And it's also, it also organized a series of uh, uh, international events to promote technology innovation. And uh, one of, of the most significant uh, is the China Jiangsu Conference for International Technology Transfer and uh, Commercialization. So it has also several agreements with universities in order to, prom to promote research. And in conclusion, we can say that Jiangsu is a very innovative province and it will be even more de developed in the future. So now, Michele is going to introduce the Qinghai analysis. Hello again. Um, you all know about Qinghai now, because, I mean, I thought probably you didn't know about it before, but now you do. Qinghai is one of the poorest regions in China. And this is very important to mention because when we talk about, in the title, One China, Two Trends, we should probably be saying One China, Several Trends, Two Speeds. But that would be too long for a title. So Now, Qinghai, last year, 2017, recorded the second lowest GDP. And this is important. Is this part of the Gold West strategy? China knows about, about the differences between the East Coast and the Western regions. They know about it. That's why years ago they stated that they were about to implement several um, plans and uh, projects to improve the quality and technological development of the Western regions. And um, to do that, of course, there must be, they cannot do that by themselves, so there must be some sort of cooperation among, uh, between the provinces. And Qinghai in particular has partnerships with uh, some places from the East Coast, Beijing, Shanghai, Zhejiang, which are usually on top of the list that we uh, considered. Now, when looking at the data of Qinghai, uh, we can see an uh, increasing in imports. Now, we know that China doesn't want to rely forever on exports or the, the foreign aids of, of internationalization, we should say. So they, they are trying to reduce the amount of exports while importing a lot of technology that they can probably help them improve by themselves in the future. That, that is probably why there is that, um, that bike uh, between 2015-2016. There are also several projects linked to the province which are related to innovation in, some, in a way. Uh, there is this project about um, in, in infrastructure, so like uh, r r rural water resources management, um, that should probably improve the quality of the water uh, supply in the regions, but not only, not only there, within the next 10 years. And there is a Xining Economic and Technological Development Zone, which is a relatively uh, recent one. And Xining is the capital of the province. Uh, so this means that they're trying to focus on the area by uh, attracting the attention of people probably from China, but also from all over the world. That's why the import strikes. So we know how China is a big country, of course. We should consider more a continent than a country, and how there are several um, tendencies within the country. We looked at some of the tendencies from Zhejiang or Jiangsu, where we could, we could definitely consider them as Western uh, speed uh, places uh, to, uh, in a term of development. But there are also places like Qinghai, which does not have an opposite trend to what China has, but it has a different speed. And of course there are provinces which have sometimes a negative tendency compared to um, China's general point of view. It is important to understand how China is willing to spend lots of money on research. Uh, there have been in the past several projects like the 211 project or the 985 project uh, which were uh, meant to develop uh, the education system. Um, most, the, I mean, the best universities in China are all, of the, all the time have received uh, financial subsidies from the government to improve the quality, Qinghua, uh, Qinghai or Fudan or Chongqing University. Qinghai University is also one of them. And there is a new project which is uh, called the Double First Class University, which might be linked to this idea of developing the general education system in the country. So this might be related, and Qinghai is as well part of the project. 
Um, a few days ago, uh, Xi Jinping, during the opening speech, said, we will show the world that will be a new economic miracle, uh, even greater than the one you've just seen. And technically, when Chinese leadership says something like that, they probably mean it. So we'll probably see something uh, important in the next uh, few years. And today, there should be the closing sta uh, statement of the um, uh, meeting in, uh, in China. So we will see if they came up with something even more interesting today uh, in the, the last week. Uh, thanks for the attention. Uh, in case you have some questions, we will be more than glad to try to answer those where we can. And um, have a nice afternoon later on. We will come back to the report. So, we'll come back. Now we can start the second part of this morning. So, this time, the main actors will be the Master in Business Strategy and International Management. They conducted a really intense research starting from patents. And these patents were the patents that were registered at the European level. So they had a really huge data set to firstly analyze and manage, and then they tried to find something interesting out of it. So they applied all the possible techniques that they learned of descriptive statistics, commenting and critically evaluating each result. And now I will leave directly the floor to the first group that already is presenting here. So with Francesca, Alessandro, Martina, and Nicolò. Okay. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Alessandro and I'm part of this group uh, composed by Francesca, Martina and Nicolò and we are going to introduce you to our research, to the results of our analysis. Um, our research is called Measuring Innovation, the Specialization of Market in a European Perspective. Indeed, we have pursued research that tends to be comparative at the international level. And also, we narrow it down to the regional level. And for the former part, we will be focusing on Italy. And in the latter part, we'll be focusing on Marche. And what we will do is to try to understand what it means to measure innovation through a quantitative analysis of patent data and also to give an insight of the smart specialization strategy of market within a European context. So, this is the structure of this talk of today, which takes all the most significant points of our report. So, at first, I will give you a picture of the context of our research and I will tell you about the design and methodology of the analysis that we have conducted. After that, my colleagues will tell you about the findings that we have found and especially they will focus on an overview on Italy, on other European countries in terms of patent shares and after that they will tell you about the index for innovation that we have construed in order to give a more exhaustive analysis and to gather more exhaustive information about the degree of innovation of European countries that are under investigation in our analysis. And in the end we will focus as I said before on market how it is positioned uh, within the European Union, and we will provide a few suggestions on connections which regard the specialization of market and of other European regions that share the same special knowledge in the same technological domain. In conclusion, we will give a few uh, suggestions for future perspectives on research on innovation, and also we will tell you about the limitations 
of our research, of our index for innovation, and of what it means to measure innovation in this context. So, first off, this is the context of our research. We have retrieved a data set from the OECD RegPlot database, and it includes the pattern data that have been linked to regions, European regions, according to the addresses of the applicants and inventors. And the variables that we used are the following, EU regions as units of observation, classified in a NUTS2 classification provided by the European Commission, pattern domain um, classified uh, through the International Patent Classification three digit. Then we have years and shares. Shares are a portion of inventors and applicants of patent registered. And the years of reference are as follows from 2008 to 2013 because we wanted to focus our analysis on the most recent period that included the global financial crisis and we could not include 2014, 15, 16 and 17 due to a real, a reliable, an unreliable set of information because actually the patent data for that period has um, not been updated yet. After that, we will tell you about our aim, which is to provide a useful insight of the specialization of the region market within Italy and the EU in order to provide the basis for its smart specialization strategy that we will call us 3 And the focus is measuring innovation through the number of shares. Now, let's get into the findings and I'll leave the room to Francesca. Thank you, Alessandro, and I'm going to speak uh, about the trend of uh, European Union countries. In the beginning of uh, our analysis, uh, we have uh, made uh, a general overview of uh, European Union patent application trend at an international level. Um, firstly, we have um, uh, considered uh, European countries uh, on the basis of uh, the, their number of total shares and uh, therefore we identified the top ten. After that, uh, we uh, have focused uh, on the first four countries in the ranking. And uh, this was no an arbitrary choice uh, uh, because uh, we wanted to focus uh, uh, on Italy, which uh, is uh, in the third position, and, um, and uh, compare it uh, with uh, those uh, countries who uh, are in the highest uh, place uh, in the ranking for the number of total shares. Um, these graphs show you the trend of the highest countries uh, in the ranking, uh, Germany, France, United Kingdom and Italy. Um, as you can see, uh, we have considered the trend uh, um, uh, of uh, countries, of, um, of each country for total shares from 2008 to 2013. You may notice that um, the scale in uh, these graphs uh, is composed of a different step. In the first graph, um, for Germany, uh, the, uh, the step is from 0 to 500. In the second and the third graphs, um, it is from 0 to uh, 200. And in the last one, uh, the graph for uh, Italy, um, the step is from 0 to uh, 100. Um, both graphs of Germany and uh, Italy uh, present uh, um, negative variation over time, while uh, United Kingdom and France graphs uh, show a um, positive trend. Um, the main differences between uh, these four graphs uh, are uh, to be found uh, in uh, the different number of total shares. Uh, in fact, uh, for example, it is, is it possible to um, 
to see that uh, um, uh, the, um, uh, the Germany uh, has a consider considerably number, uh, higher number, uh, more uh, friends uh, in terms of total shares. Uh, um, moreover, uh, United Kingdom and uh, Italy um, present uh, a significant gap uh, with uh, the very high, uh, high number of shares of Germany. Uh, instead, uh, uh, the gap with France uh, is uh, lower. Uh, now I leave the floor to my colleague uh, Nicolò. Thank you, Francesca. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, now I talk about the innovation. In this slide, we have a definition of innovation. And we based on uh, this definition, we decided that uh, only the use, the number of total share for our analysis was insufficient. And therefore, we decided to make our index with uh, four uh, different variables plus the total number of share. In this slide, we have a whole variable, um, and now I try to explain uh, them. Uh, research and development cost uh, included all expenses um, that try to increase the knowledge stock. And the second variable, high-tech export, the, this variable show uh, the share of export um, of high-tech product uh, on, total, um, on total export. Uh, the high-tech high product um, covers several fields, for example, aerospace, uh, pharmacy, uh, chemical, telecommunication, and even armament. And the third um, variable is very simple. In fact, we have uh, employment in high and many high technology manufacturing sector and the knowledge-intensive service sector. Um, the four variable, we have a total research. Research are professional who try to, to create a new knowledge, new method, new process, and new product. And in the last, uh, the last um, variable is a total pantheon of share. Uh, to create our index, we have a standardized variable to uniform them, uh, and then we weighed uh, the standardized variable on GDP to analyze them uh, fairly. Um, after this, we used our index uh, to make a cluster analysis, and this is the result. Uh, in, this, uh, in this slide, as you can see, the position of Italy, uh, the Italy is, is close to United Kingdom and France, and we have uh, one anomalous subject, that is Germany. Uh, in fact, uh, in this cluster analysis, we have uh, three different clusters. The first cluster, uh, the first cluster um, composing of Germany, uh, the second cluster including Italy, and the last cluster. Um, for each cluster, we made a uh, different graph, and this graph represents uh, um, um, the, the different weight of each variable for cluster. In the first cluster, composing uh, only Germany, uh, I want to focus on this variable, normal or total share, uh, because uh, this variable has a um, huge weight, but I have to say, in this cluster, uh, the whole variable has a diff um, big weight, because um, the other graph uh, have a different scale. The second cluster, uh, composing of different European countries, um, including Italy, and the main variable is uh, normal total research, but I wanted to focus on uh, of, uh, total research, uh, norm, total research, um, total share, sorry, uh, because um, in this cluster, uh, this variable is almost zero, and we can say that only the use, the number of total share in our analysis uh, is insufficient. The last cluster, um, the cluster three, um, composing of different, uh, of several countries, European countries, and I want to focus on this variable because negative, and the weight of standard uh, of standard variable uh, is so low, and putting it in relation on a GDP uh, is even negative. Now I leave the floor my colleague Martina. Thank you, Nicolò. Good morning. We are now going to focus on a regional 
global perspective. And in order to have a more exhaustive analysis of the EU patents, we uh, computed the Balassa Index, also called uh, Revealed Comparative Advantage Index, that is a tool for quantifying spatial knowledge of specific regions. The aim of our computation is to provide a comparison of market region with the, the other EU regions focusing uh, in the deep on uh, specialization of market region. This is the uh, computation we have made. So uh, we weighted at the, num the numerator each region for uh, the EU regions uh, on an IPC. Then at the denominator, we weighted each, re um, each region on uh, also here the EU regions but here the difference is that we made the uh, computation for all the IPCs. Uh, the results of the computation are the following. So as shown, first of all, as shown from the cluster that you can see, uh, it is important to underline that Marche uh, have a match with the uh, Veneto region, that is ITH3. And uh, in terms of specialization, um, the three main sectors of uh, our region are, um, as we all know, uh, textile, footwear textiles and leather sector. Marche in these three sectors matches with uh, Veneto region only in the footwear and leather uh, sector, while for the textiles we, find, we found out similarities between Marche and Valle d'Aosta and Toscana region. And uh, looking at a European level, we have a match with two uh, regions in Spain. One is uh, uh, the region of La Rioja, La Rioja, something like that, in the footwear um, sector, and uh, region Murcia for the leather sector. We also found out that we have a match with the southeast region of the uh, Czech Republic in the textile, and we have a match with Cyprus, for the leather sector. Now I give the floor to Alessandro for the conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> These are the conclusions. <laughs> and so, to conclude, to sum up, the main specializations of the region market are in the textile, in the leather, and in the footwear sectors. As you have seen, we have tried to connect market specializations with that of other regions in the EU, and um, these are our conclusions. And um, according to the academic literature on S3, on the smart specialization strategy, um, if we have this kind of results, then um, a policy should invest on the innovation of these technological domains. And furthermore, um, the literature also suggests that um, policy should favor the connection of market with, other, with, with these uh, other regions that share the same kind of specialization in the technological domain. And what we want to add is that um, we have a few limitations. That is, uh, analyzing patent shares is not the most exhaustive way, way to uh, understand the degree of specialization and um, innovation of a country and of a region. Therefore, we would suggest further research on um, the measurement that has been done here in these analysis, uh, especially so to improve the index for innovation, perhaps by adding or substituting the existing variables with ones that are more functional. And uh, also, um, we uh, will leave um, our analysis, our research, with an open question, that is whether it makes sense to invest in a manufacturing industry, uh, given that the industrial base, especially in the market and in other European regions, has, a, has been suffering a lot from the global financial crisis, and how to actually invest in this sector, so to be more competitive given the harsh global competition in these sectors, uh, especially given a smart specialization strategy. So these are our conclusions, and if you have 
any questions, please feel free to ask us later. Thanks. Okay, so good morning everyone and uh, really I would like to thank you for being here and uh, I would like to introduce you to our concept view of uh, connectivity as a strategic, as a smart strategy. And um, me with uh, my colleagues Deborah and the two Emanuele, one with a double M, uh, we, are, we have been working on uh, the topic we are given about innovation uh, under the light of the platform smart uh, specialization strategy addressed to the issue of R&D and uh, specialization. Um, before uh, preliminary, uh, before looking at the agenda, uh, at the section of our study, I would like to uh, get you involved in our research aim, uh, specifically uh, the, um, uh, our scope was uh, to define the connectivity um, in the terms of finding similarities uh, at uh, either at our national level and our regional ones uh, by using the NATS code, uh, NATS2 codes. Um, our agenda uh, starts by a brief introduction upon the concept of uh, connectivity merged with the one of patents, uh, passing through the methodology used for exploiting the data, so uh, from the path stat uh, by using the R and Excel and uh, analyzing the 30 uh, units of observation uh, in terms of the European countries and uh, two more outsider French regions and uh, um, under the, the light of the uh, three main variables. Um, namely, the first one, uh, the, um, the amount of the shares according to the co-inventors, and uh, the second one about the IPC, uh, otherwise the um, international patent um, classification. Um, that means, uh, in general, the, technical, the technological domains, and uh, finally, the, um, the priority date. Um, arriving, from, arriving to form uh, some clusters of regions and uh, uh, nations, um, um, in the, try to identify the connectivity, so the similarity among them, and uh, try to uh, investigate the uh, specialization degree of the Italian regions and uh, as a more deep, uh, uh, as a deeper level. And uh, lastly, we can reframe from, from analyzing the, uh, our market reason and uh, just finally uh, to uh, approaching some conclusion. Uh, what do I mean with innovation density? Well, it's uh, really easy because by exploiting the, uh, the patent data set that we have already given, um, patent is just uh, actually a mechanism for protecting an intellectual property um, from infringement that is developed by firm or institution. And uh, as a driving force for the specialization uh, gives a really an idea of the performance uh, of the innovative performances of the of a country or of a region. 
And um, our aim is that to uh, evaluate if the chosen technological domain uh, was, were really corresponded to the uh, actual innovation capacity of that country. Uh, here in this slide we can appreciate uh, in the order uh, the list of the technological domain uh, composed by the International Patent Office. And, um, but it's worth noting uh, in the right side the aim of our study. So the, really the collaborative perspective uh, our research was, uh, according to whom our research was run. So uh, we would focus on the international connectivity. Uh, by using the methodology I explained it earlier, uh, let's, enter in the, let's enter the first interesting analysis. And uh, it's really evident that uh, using the, the data and uh, at a European uh, uh, level, national level, uh, we can appreciate that the dendrogram gives the result of uh, degradation of three main the, um, clusters, and there is an absolute monopoly of Germany, uh, which is leading with the highest uh, uh, number of uh, patent share. Uh, for example, just to give some numbers, uh, in, the, in the automotive sector, he has uh, uh, reached uh, 115,000 shares, and he has an average in the other fields of about 65,000. Uh, the unique exception are just the sector D and E, so for example the textile. Uh, we are in the in the cycled uh, in the cycled cluster, and uh, we are together. We are with uh, France, Netherlands, and uh, beyond UK, and the other region um, are in the in another cluster. But um, uh, we, didn't, we didn't stop at this kind of analysis, but we, we want to add some more uh, confirmation, some, uh, we want to do some other analysis. Uh, so we decided to uh, adjust our, our data to the, to the GDP per capita just to, uh, in order to comprehend if the uh, real innovation corresponding to the uh, their um, economic welfare of the state related to the citizen. And um, even in this case, it was absolute, absolutely incredible, incredible that uh, the partition uh, of the dendrogram is quite similar to the previous one. So we have, uh, from one side, we, have, uh, we can appreciate the, the the difference among the well-developed country and the less rich country. Um, but um, if the, the, the thing is like before, uh, we can appreciate some weirdness. Um, I will explain better. Um, take, for example, the case of Belgium or Spain, even if uh, they were in the cluster of the um, best economics, they, should, they still have the low amount of shares. So uh, this can uh, be defined as a disruption of the allocation of the resources, but as well it can be also a strategic, a strategic management of them. So now just to go in further in the analysis, I leave the floor to Emanuele. Thank you. Hello. We are, going to see, <laughs> we are going to see the importance for the um, European uh, Economic and Innovation Contest with the connectivity. Uh, in the first moment, uh, we have an analysis between France and Italy uh, for the period from 2000-2013 uh, with the pattern similarity. We have um, analyzed, we have focused on the section B and section D. The section B is the uh, performing operation and transporting sector where um, both uh, states uh, have the highest number of patent share. Um, instead, in the section D, the textile uh, sector, we have the lowest uh, number of patent share. Oh, 
in the sector B, for uh, the France, we have the three uh, most import, more important red zones uh, for France and Italy. Um, for the France, we note that there are uh, an important group in Hill de France. Uh, we have a PSA group, Renault group, for automotive, and TAILS for the defense uh, security uh, compound. Uh, we have a lot of share, patent share, uh, uh, from uh, these three corporations. And uh, for Italy, uh, Lombardia is the most performing region. We have Magneti Marelli and Pirelli uh, in the, land, in the um, sector of automotive. Um, you know, they are very um, um, great in the field, a uh, number of patents. And the Ferrari, group, Ferrari and um, FCA group uh, uh, centers resorts for Emilia Romagna and Piemonte. Uh, for connectivity, it's important uh, the uh, four motors for Europe that include Ronalps and Lombardia, we see in the maps. Mm, this is a kind of uh, hub uh, we include, uh, that includes um, four red zones uh, in Europe, the two red zones that I call and uh, the region of Stuttgart in Germany and Catalonia in Spain. is an hub for improving the innovation and the industrializing of uh, all Europe. Okay. With the sector D, uh, we speak about textile. Um, in France, we have um, a cooperation, uh, internal uh, regional cooperation with uh, the main three region. We have Unitex, it's an association of uh, um, textile producers and uh, in the Rune Alps. We have the most uh, important player in the world of the um, fashion, uh, the fashion store, the fashion uh, brands, LVMH Group in uh, Hill de Paris. And we have the France Turf Textile, is a brand, um, quality certification label, uh, that includes the producer uh, we, um, we use, uh, we going to improve the made in France textile. For the Italy, we have Lombardia is the most performing again region also for this sector, with other with 22% um, circa of uh, um, branches of this sector. But we have two uh, very interesting uh, projects uh, from Europe. Uh, we have EUDISITAC for the Friuli Venezia Giulia, with a partnership uh, with Estonia and Sweden for a culturally um, for a cultural aim in this sector, for improving the sharing of technology and knowledge. We have CrossTechNet uh, that, um, with the Veneto and the other region in Europe. Um, the first uh, promoter is the uh, French uh, region of North Calais, and Veneto is sharing with another uh, region for improving the mechanical and the innovation in this field. Okay. We, sp we speak about uh, um, uh, the difference, the lack of connectivity in the sector H between Italy and Sweden. We see that in the first period, uh, we have a parallel, uh, similar trends for the patents in this sector, but, uh, after, um, but in the second period, uh, Sweden has an higher uh, performing trends uh, among Italy comparison to Italy. This is, uh, this is succeed, succeed because uh, um, Sweden has uh, resources a lot of um, improving in the, um, green, um, in the green energy field, um, while uh, Italy uh, will remain uh, performing stably for this. Now I give the floor to Emanuele. Thank you for the attention. Good morning. So, um, we wanted to focus more on the Italian level, so we decided to investigate the um, uh, positioning, positioning of Italian regions within the country and with respect to um, the total amount of shares. So um, we run a cluster analysis and the output of the clustering is uh, well depicted in the map you can see in the slides where um, Italian regions, based on their performances, um, are depicted in different colors. Uh, basically, we have two uh, best performing regions, uh, Lombardia and Emilia Romagna, and then we have um, some regions in the center of Italy, uh, as you can see, that are grouped with the um, northern regions, 
and some other regions uh, in the center of Italy that are uh, grouped with southern regions. Uh, this happens certainly for um, the total amount of shares, but also could, uh, could happen uh, maybe because these regions have distributed uh, their amount of shares in the same sectors. Uh, but anyway, uh, considering the market region, um, this particular trend uh, we, have, uh, we have seen uh, could, be, could be named um, a sort of salsification process, uh, even if uh, only taking into account uh, the total amount of shares could be misleading. So we decided to go further in the, in the analysis, focusing more on the market region. Uh, so we decided to take into account uh, all uh, the European regions and all the patent shares, and we calculated the Balassa Index in order to know the uh, specialization of market in each sector. Uh, we found that the um, market is um, highly specialized in these two sectors, uh, footwear and sewing and embroidery. And then, uh, based on the output of the Balassa Index, we uh, searched also the other uh, European regions that are highly specialized in these two sectors in order to make a chart. Uh, so, uh, as you can see in the graph, in the food first sector, uh, Marque is in the third position, uh, whereas in the first position we find La Rioja, uh, which is a Spanish uh, region that has an ancient tradition in this sector, uh, also hosting uh, an important museum. And finally, in sewing and embroidering, Mark is in the sixth position, um, whereas in the first position, uh, we found the southeast of Czech Republic, uh, which also has uh, an important um, tradition in, uh, in this sector. And then I pass the, to my colleague, Deborah. Good morning, everyone. Now I want to talk to you about Marche, Marche region, um, for its uh, connectivity at a national level. The first analysis that we have done is uh, the measure of the weight of the patent shares uh, of Marche region with respect to the, um, the Italian patent shares. Uh, unfortunately, we can see that um, the percentage, it represents only the 2% of the total in the years uh, 2000 and 2013. Uh, the trend uh, of these years uh, is slightly increasing with a peak in 2010, a subsequent decrease and um, a recovery by the year uh, 2012. Uh, then we divided this year into uh, two periods uh, to see how the, these patent shares uh, move. And we can see that uh, in the second period uh, the number of patent shares are higher, uh, but in not so relevant way, except for uh, the sector D, uh, um, the sector of textile and paper. Uh, in fact, we can see that uh, the value has almost quadrupled. In fact, we passed from an average of uh, 5 to uh, an average of 20 circa. Uh, so it confirms the importance that this sector has to our region. And uh, it could be more clear with this pie chart uh, in which we can see that uh, the percentage given to the sector D is 8%. Um, the best performing sector is uh, B, uh, so performing operations and transport, transporting, followed by human necessities and so on. Uh, then we wanted to uh, make another analysis, uh, which is a comparison with, with another Italian region. Uh, we chose Emilia-Romagna uh, because uh, this region is one of the best performing ones. Um, and it's um, a neighboring region, but it's, uh, it's so far in terms of uh, innovation. Uh, in fact, uh, we are going to see the shares of Mark region, and now these are the shares of Emilia-Romagna. Um, it's 
uh, easy to see the, the big distance that there is between these two regions. The only positive note is in the sector D, in which we overcome Emilia-Romagna, but in not so relevant way. To conclude, we have to say that uh, con con connectivity is an economic pillar of European innovation, and we should consider cooperation as, a va as an ad added value to, um, to competitiveness. And um, the matching between the heritage and the know-how uh, is the best way for an efficient future strategies. Thank you for the attention. Excuse me a second, the further group has to wait a little because first of all there is an important message for you all from Mariani, please. please come. Eh, una, un incursione nel, la, nell'organizzazione della giornata, abbiamo un incontro di, di quel, con la nostra compagine oggi con eh, Simone Mariani, che è stato vicepresidente dell'Istau e consigliere d'amministrazione, eh, ho chiesto al presidente Mariani eh, di intervenire eh, a questo incontro, eh, una rapidissima presentazione, fulminante presentazione de, dell'azienda Sabelli, che dopo la presenza francese è la più grande impresa italiana nella uh, lavorazione dei latte e derivati. Questa è un'impresa che si è espansa in uh, controtendenza diciamo, rispetto alla crisi eh, 2007, 8, 2016, 2017 e quindi ha, ha inglobato prima un'impresa e poi un'altra esattamente negli ultimi eh, due anni. Un'esperienza di successo. Mariani è anche presidente dell'Associazione Industriali di eh, Ascoli Piceno e Fermo e quindi è particolarmente interessata a entrambe le tematiche che qui stamattina voi state presentando, sia il mercato cinese in ingresso e uscita che eh, la specializzazione intelligente, Industria 4.0, il lavoro 4.0 insieme a Industria 4.0. Grazie. Bene, buongiorno, buongiorno a tutti, davvero un... Uh, come dire, un intervento il mio inaspettato questa mattina, ma che mi fa molto, molto piacere, quando ecco, incontrando il Presidente Marcolini mi ha raccontato un po' il profilo del, di, queste, di questi due gruppi, ho davvero ritenuto con piacere che un, un mio saluto fosse da parte mia, soprattutto molto, molto gradito. Eh, due parole, ecco, su, come diceva il Presidente, sulla, sulla mia azienda. Rappresento un gruppo nel settore alimentare, food, che ha una presenza nazionale ed internazionale. Eh, il gruppo, diciamo, oggi ha un giro a fare di circa 200 milioni di euro in Europa, con 550-560 collaboratori in Italia ed in Europa. Ovviamente il tema delle risorse umane, delle persone, del management è davvero la chiave del successo dell'esperienza mia personale e delle imprese che rappresento, perché soprattutto in una fase come quella che è stata poc'anzi accennata di crescita eh, intensa, non repentina ma intensa, anche attraverso una strategia di crescita esterna, quindi attraverso operazioni di M&A, di acquisizione italiane, ma anche cross-border, diventa fondamentale la dotazione di capitale umano competente, preparato, che possa gestire queste sfide, che sono a volte sfide eh, quando si dice disruptive, nel senso di Um, sono dei salti, a volte dei salti dimensionali, eh, che richiedono appunto davvero un, un grande eh, contributo da parte delle, delle persone. Credo che abbiate, e quindi merito sia dell'Istao, 
delle università anche che collaborano eh, al, in particolare al Master China, tra virgolette, abbiate entrambi centrato davvero due driver fondamentali per lo sviluppo dell'economia nei prossimi anni, ma in questo momento. Eh, e quindi da un lato il mercato asiatico, io ho l'opportunità anche di seguire un'altra azienda, per esempio nel settore luxury, è chiaro che l'Asia è il mercato trainante soprattutto per, per, alcuni, per alcuni settori e quindi da, diciamo, da, dal Middle East fino all'Estremo Oriente, da Singapore a Hong Kong a tutta la Cina, eh, ma anche a mercati secondari, penso a Taiwan, penso alla Corea, ci sono delle enormi opportunità e quindi eh, poi si parlava invece di innovazione, di industria 4.0, quindi anche rimanendo più in un mercato italiano ed europeo, eh, in questi anni sono stati importanti, e davvero questa è stata una delle belle iniziative degli ultimi anni, quella del diciamo, ehm, tema di industria 4.0, quindi le agevolazioni fiscali legate a questo tipo di investimenti, e quello che oggi più che mai nelle aziende serve però è avere cervelli e intelligenze che possano, oltre agli investimenti fisici nelle aziende, mettere in rete queste fabbriche intelligenti e, e davvero poi portare eh, questa innovazione sul mercato. Quindi il mio non vuole che essere davvero un, un augurio per tutti voi di grandi soddisfazioni, di grandi successi per la vostra carriera personale, professionale. Credo che la determinazione, la passione e l'entusiasmo siano forse gli elementi più importanti ancora più che le competenze in senso stretto. Quindi so che affronterete esperienze eh, all'estero per chi ha fatto il Master China, in Italia per gli altri. Io come suggerimento, anche al fine proprio di avere un grande appeal nei confronti delle imprese, delle istituzioni in cui andrete ad operare, è quello di mettere davvero quando dico passione e determinazione, cioè deve uscire un pochino la persona, al di là delle competenze di quello che avete studiato, ma dovete mettere qualcosa di voi dentro quello che fate, perché poi le aziende hanno bisogno di persone più che di eh, come dire, semplici eh, collaboratori, e le persone sono quello che rappresentano, quello che possono mettere in termini di proprio contributo. Quindi un grande in bocca al lupo, buon Natale, buone feste e buon futuro a tutti voi. Good morning everyone, uh, my name is uh, Domi Di Vittoria and I'm going to show you our work focused on uh, the differences and similarities uh, uh, throughout Europe uh, measured by patent uh, registration, patent, patent activity. But uh, before starting, let me introduce you my colleagues, Pinna Dario Francesco, uh, Abdul Dashan and Sofia Cicchini. Our, um, our project starts from a, a sort of political statement. Uh, European countries are divided by economic uh, performance. Uh, this uh, divergence has been shown uh, in a particular way after the economic and financial crisis. Uh, a period in uh, which we have seen that uh, the crisis uh, hit the countries in a different way. Uh, some countries uh, showed to be uh, um, resilient and competitive, while others are uh, still struggling with the uh, consequences of this uh, crisis, mainly a uh, high level of unemployment and uh, um, poverty. 
Uh, this divergence across member states uh, is one of the bi biggest obstacles to social cohesion and political stability in the EU. Uh, just for say something more special, uh, it's not a case that uh, actually um, the um, uh, populist movements are uh, getting more import are getting important in those weak uh, countries. So the uh, cohesion policy has, has, has always been at the center of the European strategies and um, with the goal to close this gap uh, between uh, weak countries and, stronger, and strong countries. Uh, in this context, uh, the, um, in the last years, one of the most important uh, policy uh, launched by European institutions has been Europe 2020 strategy, whose aim is to uh, ensure a smart, a sustainable and uh, inclusive uh, growth uh, all over uh, Europe. And uh, one of the um, main uh, uh, pillar of this strategy has been the smart specialization strategy uh, whose aim is to have uh, not only an economic development but also an innovation development. Uh, giving these uh, premises, uh, uh, our we, uh, we would like to answer to two questions. The first one is, uh, what are the main differences among European countries in terms of innovation measured by number of patents? And uh, at the same time, the same question for Italy. So what are the main differences among Italian regions uh, in terms of innovation? Uh, so uh, we would like to understand if there is a sort of parallelism between uh, the situation in Europe and the situation in Italy. For um, the agenda of our analysis is the follow, so I will give a brief in introduction to data and methodology. Then my colleagues will show you the empirical results at, uh, first at European level, then at Italian level, uh, with a little focus uh, on the market. And then some conclusions are drawn in the final section. About data methodology, we have uh, analyzed the database uh, um, reporting uh, the patents uh, registered in, uh, at the European Patent Office from uh, 2000 to 2015, but uh, for uh, our analysis, we focus our attention to the period 2000 to 2013 for uh, uh, the lack of information of the last years. Then uh, we have integrated this uh, database with the gross domestic products level registered in the same period, both uh, uh, at country level and uh, at Italian region level. The territorial, uh, the territorial uh, units uh, used for our analysis are country and regions. Uh, the, our results, our uh, empirical results are, uh, um, come from uh, different instruments in particular trend measures so, uh, through time variation, the, uh, through time variation. Then we have uh, computed the uh, Balassa index and we have used it, uh, this, this index to clusterize the first countries in Europe and then uh, uh, regions for, uh, for Italy. So, um, at first look, we, if we look at the number of patents uh, at uh, European level, we have this distribution. Not surprisingly, we have in the, at the top of the distribution the countries from uh, the north and the uh, center of Europe. So the, stronger, uh, um, the strongest uh, country uh, under the point of view of the economic. Uh, while at the bottom we found uh, um, countries from uh, east uh, of, uh, of Europe. Uh, but at the same time, we have uh, thought that this is not uh, a, a precise uh, ranking because uh, it, do it doesn't take into account the potentiality, the economic potentiality of, uh, the, um, of the country. So for this reason, we have decided to calculate the number of patents on gross domestic product. And then we found a redistribution except for Germany that is always at the top of the ranking, uh, we have a different distribution of for your countries. And in particular, it's important to see, for us, I mean, it's important to see um, that some countries, like for example, France, UK, Italy, Spain, lose some position. And this means that in, in, in respect to the other ranking, countries ranking. And this means that uh, uh, they are not using uh, 
their economic, their economic potentiality at the maximum level. So the, their potentiality is not exploited, while other countries like, for, in, especially countries from east of uh, Europe, uh, have a better position if we take into account the gross domestic product. And uh, this uh, trend is uh, confirmed if we look at the time variation. So if we look at the, uh, if, if we look at time vari the um, patent uh, registration from 2000 to 2013 uh, at country level, uh, we see that 15% uh, is the average variation at European level. And we can uh, identify two different groups of, of countries uh, above and under the European mean. Under the European mean, we found um, the best performer countries uh, in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of uh, patents, uh, total number of patents. So Germany, Netherlands, and United Kingdom, uh, they are registering a negative trend. While if we want to have a look at the best performer, we have to go to the east of Europe because uh, all these countries that are all from, all from the east of Europe, they are all above the European mean, and in particular Malta is growing uh, very fast, uh, and uh, thanks to this level we have an average variation that is uh, of 15%. Now I leave the floor to my colleague Dario, who will uh, complete the general overview about uh, Europe. Okay. Good morning, uh, everybody. Uh, let's go into the second and last part of uh, our analysis at uh, European uh, level. By computing uh, the totals of uh, patents uh, produced in Europe uh, in, uh, the, in between 2000 and 2013, we, we made this uh, sectorial analysis using the classification WIPO, which stands for World Intellectual Property Organization. So, uh, to make things easier, we decided to, uh, to call all the sectors with the letters. So, we have H, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H sector. It is possible to notice easily that uh, the, um, the biggest sector in Europe is uh, performing operations with uh, uh, is uh, the, the bigger one and then we have uh, other four sectors uh, that uh, present a homogeneous uh, trend which are uh, it is around uh, 15 percent and we are talking about uh, human necessities chemistry and uh, metallurgy electricity and physics the um, sector in which uh, Europe has produced uh, less uh, uh, patents is uh, textiles and paper. So, going on, it is, po it is possible to analyze uh, also sub subsectors because uh, uh, every uh, sector, uh, every main sector, has inside a lot of uh, subsector. In, in fact, they are. Uh, um, correlated by typolo typology of, uh, of those uh, subsectors. And uh, we were uh, uh, amazed fi finding that uh, A61 subsector, which is medical or veterinary science and hygiene, with a weight of 60% uh, 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 circa, is um, bigger uh, almost as a, a main sector because if uh, we go back, we can, say, we can see that um, it is a very big uh, percentage. Okay, so to better understand the sector's uh, dynamics over uh, uh, the years, it has been uh, necessary to divide the, the overall period into two uh, equal periods. The first one goes uh, from 2000 to 2006, the second one from 2007 to 2013. We, ha we find out that um, there are not uh, very, different, very big differences uh, between uh, those trends. In fact, they are almost uh, the same, uh, except for uh, F sector, where we have uh, a moderate increase of uh, 2%. So uh, we decided to 
to go on, just uh, taking the overall period for uh, those reasons. Here we have uh, a cluster analysis for sectors in Europe, and uh, we found that uh, um, uh, all the population of uh, 28 uh, countries has been uh, uh, clusterized into three groups, three main groups uh, that are in uh, yellow, green, and blue. So, analyzing uh, wh what kind of uh, specialization uh, characterizes those um, clusters, we used the Balassa index, and um, it, um, uh, we, we found out that a um, sector that uh, characterizes all uh, of the groups uh, is textiles and paper. But uh, uh, the um, interesting thing is that uh, uh, for cluster one and two, it is uh, uh, least uh, specialization because uh, uh, instead, sorry, in uh, the third, in which uh, we can find Italy, we found that, is, uh, that textile and paper is the most uh, specialized. So I give the floor to my colleague uh, Abdullah that will uh, explain the results of our empirical research on uh, an Italian level. Thank you, Dario. Let's take a look at uh, our Italian pie. Uh, and we can, we can notice uh, the most performing sector is a uh, performing operation with a percentage of 27%. Uh, the second one uh, is a uh, human necessity sector A, and uh, we have uh, the low, uh, lowest percentage in textile and paper, and uh, textile and paper, and the fixed construction. But uh, textile and paper, we have a uh, uh, one per point, uh, 90 near uh, uh, percentage better than uh, the trend of Europe. Uh, which are the sub uh, going deeper? We can see the subsector uh, with the highest percentage. We can we can take a look and uh, the highest percentage we have it in A61 with uh, near uh, 50. Uh, no, sorry, uh, we have. Uh, the highest percentage in D06 and in A61. Uh, the lowest one is uh, B65 and is covering packaging and storing. And uh, we calcu by calculating the time variation from the, the period from 2000 and 2000 and, uh, uh, 2013, we can notice uh, we can notice that uh, there are. Uh, um, the, the average variation uh, is 8%, and uh, we have uh, Lazio, uh, Sicilia, Lombardia, Abruzzo, uh, they have a negative trend. Uh, we can see uh, Molise and Basilicata have the highest percentage, and uh, Molise is near the 60%, and uh, Basilicata going uh, near the 30%. Uh, we, we have, uh, in general, uh, ob uh, above the mean, the, above the mean we have uh, the south uh, region except Bolzano and Valle d'Aosta. Uh, the market is, near, uh, is uh, in the middle. Uh, uh, by look, um, let's take a look at the ranking of the patent in Italy for regions. Uh, uh, up we can see Lombardia, Emilia Romagna and Veneto and uh, down we can see Valle d'Aosta, Basilicata and Molise. How, how, uh, how this ranking can change if we, we calculate the, G, the total of patents on GDP? GDP. We can see that uh, Lombardia lost, lo, uh, going to fifth position. Emilia Romagna, Toscana and Lazio have a uh, uh, have gained the position, and uh, uh, Umbria, uh, Umbria gained nine position exactly. Uh, in, uh, the, there is Trento and Valle d'Aosta uh, have the same trend, and uh, the other region is quite similar. Now I leave the floor to Sofia. Thank you, Abdullah. 
Um, so now um, we uh, go on with the last part of the, uh, our analysis. Uh, first of all, we have to um, uh, have a look to the cluster analysis for subsector in Italy. Um, in this dendrogram, we uh, can see the four um, different clusters um, that characterize uh, um, Italian country. The first cluster um, is the most populated cluster and uh, is uh, the cluster in which uh, market region is present. Then uh, we have the second cluster um, that is composed of ba uh, Valle d'Aosta. And then we have the third and the fourth cluster uh, in which, except Bolzano, uh, there are um, south, uh, um, the, the Italian uh, southern region. Um, it could be very useful to have a look at this. Um, in fact, we have Marche and Veneto that are very close. Um, and uh, I will explain um, later uh, this fact. Deeply. Um, in this graph, uh, we have uh, mm, the level of speciali specialization for each cluster. Um, we could see, uh, we can see um, the subsector that uh, has uh, um, um, the highest influence on the, um, uh, each cluster. For example, for the uh, first uh, cluster, uh, that is the cluster in which market region is present, uh, is the subsector F42, uh, eating, ranges and ventilating, that uh, has uh, the, um, the highest weight um, on the uh, Balassa index. Um, Balassa index that in this case uh, um, has been calculated not on uh, the sector as we did in the European cluster but uh, on the subsector. Uh, the last part of uh, the analysis has the aim to, um, to give a focus on market region. Um, we have calculated uh, the Balassa index for uh, every um, region of uh, Italy and Europe, and uh, we have uh, found that Marche is uh, has the, the best specialization in three uh, main subsectors that uh, are A43, um, C14, and D5. This is the first uh, subsector that uh, characterizes Marche, and we can see that um, the Balassa index um, has a, um, quite a high value, um, but Veneto um, has an higher value than the first one. So a company that uh, decides to improve the, their performance um, has to um, evaluate uh, very well uh, uh, Veneto, uh, the, 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 the trend of uh, Veneto uh, companies. And then there is um, La Roya um, in Spain and the Isole Baleari, um, um, Bulgaria's country and Malta. These are the countries that we have to consider um, at uh, uh, an European level. The second um, subsector that characterizes the market is skin size, pearls and leather. C14. In this case, we can see that um, there isn't uh, another um, Italian region uh, um, uh, with we could compare market, but uh, there are all uh, European countries. And then uh, the, the third uh, um, subsector is D5. In this case, market should be compared with uh, Valle d'Aosta and we, uh, with the three um, countries of Czech Republic. And in fine, with, uh, and, and at the end, with the uh, uh, country of UK. Um, uh, now, to conclude uh, our analysis, um, I'll try to give you the answer to the first uh, question that my colleague uh, um, said at the beginning. So, the first uh, uh, question was, uh, what are the main differences among European countries in terms of innovation measured by number of patents? 
um, we uh, have tried to answer to this question uh, um, saying that uh, mm, there is a divergence uh, between the Eastern and Western European countries, uh, both in terms of number of patents and uh, in time variation. Uh, for the second question, uh, the answer is um, that there is also uh, a divergence uh, between the southern and northern Italian region, um, always in terms of patents and time variation. And uh, these two answers uh, could be um, uh, seen um, as uh, in, a, in a sort of parallelism between uh, the, the European trend and the Italian trend. Uh, at the end, uh, we want to give uh, a suggestion uh, because uh, if you want to go deeper with uh, the analysis, um, uh, we should uh, consider also other variables such as R&D expenditure and economic growth in order to have uh, a better overview on the um, general uh, trend in terms of uh, innovation um, about uh, Europe, Italy and also Marche. Thank you for the attention. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Nico Giuliani. I, I, first of all, I would like to thank my group, my team, Alicia Silvestroni, uh, Ilaria Ambrosi, and Giorgio Parente. Uh, it was a pleasure to work with you. Uh, thank you to the audience. Uh, I know it's lunchtime. I make an effort. I will be short. Um, we started our research from a question, and the question is, where is better to invest according to the smart specialization strategy? And uh, uh, to answer this question, we have to know what is smart specialization strategy. We call it S3. Um, we can summarize a smart specialization strategy, as you can see, in three bullets. Uh, we focus on the first one. Uh, we emphasize the technology rather than the product and services. Uh, we <coughs> started our analysis uh, thinking about what uh, would like to be analyzing regions, European regions, and their, technological, their main technological domains, um, and to understand uh, where was, um, was hopefully to uh, put um, resources to develop uh, the technology, not only of the region, but of the old country itself. Um, so, uh, data and methodology, we started from patents, as I said before, uh, but uh, going deeper in the analysis, we understood that patents were not the only, um, uh, the only thing we could, um, uh, we could appreciate in some ways, because uh, it, it, patents were not uh, able to justify um, our deeper analysis. To do that, we, um, we started uh, downloading other uh, variables from Eurostat and Istat websites that are um, that, could, uh, that could help us to go deeper in the analysis, especially at an Italian region, uh, at an Italian level, sorry. Uh, for the geography, uh, the NATS2 level is in Europe and in Italy. We took into account this level because it is universally, um, Europe, uh, sorry, in Europe it is uh, um, a division made by the European Commission and there are, there, they are related to patents. And uh, for the time range of the analysis, we started from 1992 because uh, uh, as you know, the Maastricht Treaty was uh, a huge step forward in the, uh, uh, for, for Europe, especially because from that time we started sharing knowledge, information, and so on. Uh, then, going deeper in the analysis, we uh, mm, mm, 
focus on the shorter period of time because uh, the data sets uh, we used uh, that was download that were downloaded from Eurostat and Listat were not so um, there, there was a lack of data uh, before 2008 and so in our uh, in our opinion was sufficient to take into account uh, the period 2008 2012 uh, because it can give us, uh, um, even if it's shorter than the other one, um, uh, a, a complete overview of, uh, uh, on the Italian and the regional part. Uh, so, uh, the agenda. Uh, we started, as I said, from a general overview. You can see from the map the colors, uh, uh, the lighter colors going deeply into analysis. They, they become uh, dark. Um, so, from a general overview uh, of Europe, we went on uh, uh, calculating with the Balassa Index um, uh, the, specialization, the specialization of European regions, uh, and then uh, um, came to Italy to the Italian general overview, but at this point we understood that patents were not sufficient uh, and we tried to, uh, download, to, to take into account other variables that can show us uh, um, better what we would like to focus on. Uh, then uh, um, Marche, uh, it's our region, so uh, it, was, uh, uh, it, it was the main focus of our research and of uh, we um, focus on the specialization of market, uh, and, uh, but starting from the European level, I can leave the floor to Alicia that will show, will show us uh, the, the, the European contest uh, and the, the general overview of our research. Thank you, Nico. Um, let's talk about uh, uh, European situation. And um, this both uh, graph uh, represents the patent share uh, over uh, 20 years. But in the first graph, um, as we can see, uh, Germany has the um, highest level of um, patent, um, more or less uh, an average of um, 30,000 of patent. Um, the following countries um, are UK, France, and Italy. But in the other um, graph, we can see uh, patent share. We, um, we want to, um, to show the patent share, to the patent share over weighted to the population. Uh, in fact, we can, um, we can see the difference of the results. And uh, Germany, of course, um, has a very important uh, situation. But the following country are, uh, the countries are um, Sweden and Finland. Um, in, in our analysis, uh, at this point, uh, we want to um, analyze the specialization of uh, the, um, the European region at, at uh, NATS2 level. Uh, so, um, we focus on the attention uh, of the, on the um, first three countries that uh, I say before, and um, the specialization is for Sweden, paper making and presses, Finland, butchering and processing fish, um, hardware and working wood, and for Germany, tobacco and printing and uh, book binding. Um, according to um, our research, um, there is a reason for this specialization. And um, for example, in Sweden, uh, we, um, they um, de de develop uh, the um, um, system, an innovative system of paper making that became uh, a sector that uh, most important, uh, in, um, very important for the export. Uh, and uh, in other countries, Germany, um, we, um, we see that in the region of uh, specialization of tobacco, um, there is lo located the, um, the company, the uh, British American companies, that it, it could be a reason for the, this specialization. And of course, Lipsia is uh, one of the, uh, in Lipsia, there, there is one of the most important uh, book fair of the, of the world. Uh, 
And um, at, the, at this point, uh, we will have um, a complete overview of um, uh, European innovation, uh, consider other, other uh, variables. According to the um, um, scientific and academic literature, uh, we, uh, we choose uh, these variables to, um, to do a um, cluster analysis. And uh, the results uh, is uh, this cluster. Uh, we, um, we have four clusters, um, one made of uh, Germany, in which the, um, uh, the level of innovation is the highest. And the, in the other cluster, the level of innovation are um, lower. And um, in the biggest one, in the biggest uh, cluster, uh, from Romania to Slovenia, uh, there is um, uh, the lowest um, level of innovation. Uh, now I will um, leave the floor to Giorgio, and that uh, he will explain the Italian situation. Thank you, Alicia. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. I will give you a general overview of innovation in Italian regions. Um, okay. Uh, as we can see, the trend of patent share um, in Italy is well dominated by Lombardia. But if we analyze the ratio of patent share over population, is not easily readable. Uh, for example, we can see uh, Emilia Romagna and Friuli Venezia Giulia have highest value. So we can generalize this kind of analysis by thinking what a patent is. A patent is an objectified new idea. So we need three elements to have a, a new patent. First, people, because people have ideas. Second, enterprises, because enterprises uh, can provide a framework in which employees can pose and solve problems. Third, GDP, because economic resources are often uh, indispensable to, develop, uh, to the development of a new technology. Uh, therefore, we can put together these three kinds of density, patent share over population, patent share over enterprises, and patent share over GDP, to create a new index. We call it Innovation Density Index. Okay, we created a map of Italian regions according to the IDI. Um, first, we observed that there is a, a, a big difference with, um, between uh, northern Italy and southern Italy. Uh, we divide Italy in seven, uh, seven classes. First class is composed by Friuli Venezia Giulia and Emilia Romagna. Second class is composed by Piemonte, Lombardia and Veneto. Third class is composed by Marche and Trentino Alto Agge. So we can say that Marche is a very competitive region with respect to the northern Italy. Now I leave the floor to my colleague Ilaria for a focus on market. Thank you, Giorgio, and good morning to everyone. From the composite index, it came out that market is the best region on the center of Italy, and it could have the possibility to keep up with the regions of the north, and north of Italy. But what is the specialization? of market. So we, to answer this question, we, we have to, to see at Balassa Index uh, that show us the specialization of the uh, regions, of European region in particular, for this research. And we, we found that market ha has a specialization in uh, three technological sectors. The first one is uh, footwear. Marke is has a high special, uh, specialization on footwear sector and is preceded by only three European regions, in particular La Rioja, that's a Spanish uh, region 
uh, where uh, there is a center of technological and uh, where they they want to uh, to invest uh, in uh, innovation for innovation uh, in the uh, footwear sector and of course Veneto in Italian uh, region with knowing uh, also an international context and uh, we have in uh, our region uh, uh, several um, companies who invest in the R&D department such as uh, Tots uh, or Nero Giardini owned by Bag SPA or uh, also so Cesare Paciotti or Santoni. But we also have uh, an important and special example of uh, innovation in a traditional sector like footwear. It's La Manuelita. La Manuelita is a company uh, of our region, region who produce uh, uh, footwear in high level of footwear. And Manuelita recently uh, realized uh, an innovative uh, robotic system to integrate uh, the workers' uh, know-how with this new machinery to simplify the uh, production process. And Manuelita attests the uh, innovation in a traditional sector like footwear. The second sector where Marke is specialized in is skins, hides, belts, or leather. And uh, Marke is uh, in the top four in the European uh, region, and it's the second one. And uh, an example of the companies uh, in our region who invest in R&D department is Poltrona Frau. And uh, uh, the last sector where Mark is very specialized, where he, it has a high specialization in sewing, embroidering, and tufting. In this, it's uh, uh, preceded by only one region in the European uh, context. That is the uh, Czech Republic uh, region, who has a traditional uh, uh, story of uh, manufacturing, in the manufacturing sector. And uh, we have uh, an important uh, example of uh, companies who produce patents and innovation in this sector, that is Lardini. In conclusion, we found uh, a, a strong relatedness uh, between this free uh, sector, this technological sector, and uh, they have to, to carry on a tradition in this sector, but it should be carried on uh, innovating and uh, with the production of the patents. And on the other side, the connectivity between different regions is, too, is uh, uh, always difficult to find, but uh, in Italy uh, there, there are uh, Veneto and Marche, which have uh, similar values in terms of specialization. So Italy uh, should invest in innovation in this free technological sector to uh, keep up with the uh, most advanced countries and to keep up with, uh, in uh, technological development. Thank you for your attention. And if there are any questions, you'll, uh, I, we, we, we'll try to, to answer you. <laughs> Sono felice di aver visto decisi miglioramenti dalle prime volte che ci siamo visti, dal primo incontro che abbiamo avuto e anche da quelli successivi. Eh, credo che abbiate iniziato un percorso di acquisizione di una competenza che al momento è particolarmente rilevante e preziosa, cioè la, la capacità di comprendere fenomeni, fenomeni misurati attraverso indicatori, eh, indicatori quantitativi che sono fondamentali per comprendere, come abbiamo visto, le dinamiche innovative, ma non solo, le dinamiche economiche e spesso e volentieri vengono usati e abusati eh, e quindi avete uno strumento anche per, che, che vi, vi permette sostanzialmente di comprendere ciò che viene detto da, a destra e, e macchina. 
Eh, devo dissentire con l'ospite precedente, trovo che l'entusiasmo sia fondamentale, ma le competenze non devono venire meno, e quindi eh, spero che questo sia un primo passo per acquisire questa competenza che trovo particolarmente rilevante. Comunque com complimenti per il lavoro fatto. Well, for me, I have followed you throughout this project, so I saw your development step by step, but I can show you, really, and show you that today you overpassed all the expectations. You really were calm, determined, and really showed great presentation skills that I wasn't even expecting. So you really can be proud of yourself and enjoy all the Christmas holiday, really satisfied for what you have achieved. And I hope that you will be using all the skills in future works in different dynamics for analyzing different cases in your business environment maybe where you'll be located to analyzing maybe marketing dynamics and so on or even micro phenomena like you did now for different subjects you have the tools to do it and you have really the capacity and the competence to go beyond the number and provide an interpretation of it so thank you very much Hi. Okay, so thank you again to our tutor, to our uh, teacher, and uh, I want just to add that the region, the market region couldn't be present today, but they uh, asked us to organize a meeting there, whereas you may present, introduce your research, and also you will be invited to express and uh, describe your work to the, uh, the personnel there. So we are going to organize an event. We are going to see if uh, separately or, or joined, we will see, because you are two master, but with different times. And I think that will be a very important uh, uh, event for you and also for them <laughs> and also for us. <laughs> so now uh, we are going to go downstairs. We have a little surprise for you and just uh, a little uh, ceremony to say you uh, goodbye and see you in January and uh, best wishes to you and your families. Okay. <laughs>